Hi ladies, I hope you're having a beautiful Thursday. Um, it's gorgeous here in Massachusetts. It's in the upper 60s and it's sunny and um, lovely out. So I'm really enjoying the day and I hope you all are as well. Um, today is part one of my two part series, Stressed and Wired or Stressed and Tired. So today we're specifically going to be talking about the Stressed and Wired group. Um, and the reason for that is because that is really like in the beginning stages of adrenal fatigue. So you're not quite in the fatigue range yet, although you may be experiencing fatigue. So I don't want to say that you're not, but you don't have that like dog, bone dog tired kind of feeling, that just exhausted feeling. Um, you tend to feel more wiry um, and alert at weird times than you would be normally or, um, you know, that should, different times than really um, it should be happening. So I'm going to talk to you about um, what the stress and wired is, what causes it, the symptoms of it, and um, five tips you can implement um, to help uh, reboot your adrenals and help to prevent you from getting to that stressed and tired stage. Because I can tell you it takes a lot longer to rebound from the stressed and tired than it does stressed and wired because the stressed and tired is burnout like adrenal fatigue, no doubt. Whereas the stress and wired, you're in the beginning, you're not quite there completely yet. So you have a chance to get out of it. Um, so basically this all takes, uh, takes us back to the HPA access. And I mentioned this on um, a previous video. Um, HPA stands for the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal gland access. And so that's your central stress response. And so the hypothalamus um, actually speaks to the pituitary gland, which both are in the brain. And then the pituitary gland actually signals to your adrenals, um, your thyroid, your sex hormones, and it, it basically um, tells it when to release the hormones and stuff like that. So it's a super important um, thing, and, and I feel like everything always comes back to the HPA access because, like I said, thyroid, sex hormones, adrenals, main thing, um, main hormones in our body. Um, so the HPA access um, it regulates your body temperature, your circadian rhythm, so that's going to be your flow of energy and sleep um, during the day, um, your metabolism, it regulates your fluids, um, it's responsible for thyroid function, and it is also exp uh, responsible for expressing um, your steroidal hormones like the cortisol, the adrenaline, and um, progesterone, so, and, and more, a lot more than that, but that's just a few. So your parasympathetic rest and digest mode is your regulatory function of the body. So when you're in that rest and digest, um, that's really when your body can focus on maintenance functions, balancing fluids and electrolytes and all of that. And it also um, can focus on immunity and, and things like that. So um, it's very important that we achieve rest and digest um, really daily. Um, or else you're going to find yourself to um, inch into the stressed and wired and hopefully not fully into the stressed and tired. So um, your stressors, it could be psychological or physiological. So psychological, that could be, you know, really anything from um, your relationships, whether romantic or your family dynamics. It can be, um, you know, working too many hours, that go, go, go mentality, um, anxiety, um, worrying all the time um, about things you said or things you did, um, which is a big one for me. That's one thing I do. I like torture myself over things I, 
I say um, when probably the reality is that other person didn't even think twice about it. But um, so we like to torture ourselves in that way, and that causes psychological stress, um, as well as overthinking causes psychological stress. So um, depression. There's a lot of other things, um, and then our physiological stress could be anything from a chronic illness or just being sick, a surgery, giving birth, um, over exercising. That's a big one. Um, a lot of people are over exercisers out there. Um, it could be an overgrowth of bad bacteria. Um, it could be environmental or um, food toxins that you're eating. Um, and uh, there are micronutrient deficiencies as one as well. So there's a lot of um, physiological stressors as well. So what it does is it puts your body into that, um, that HPA access over production, overdrive mode. So, um, so that's something that you really need to disengage. Um, so in your fight or flight, um, you're going to experience, well, basically what happens is the blood that's all central in your organs and everything and um, enriching your organs, it, it goes out into your limbs um, really to help you escape your danger because, you know, back in the day, we weren't sitting at our desks stressed out at work. We weren't just sitting on our butts. We were actually, like, out there hunting and, and stuff, so... Um, you know, we were running from cheetahs, so it was very important that that blood, you know, left the organs and went out into the limbs so we could get away. So that can cause a lot of issues um, when you're in that chronic stress, that constant stress, because your organs aren't getting the um, amount of blood and oxygen and, and all of that that is crucial for the rest to digest. Um, you could ex you also experience vasoconstriction, so that's going to be the increased um, blood pressure, uh, you're going to have shorter br breaths, shorter breathing, so um, that increases your heart rate. Um, you also will experience reduced salivary enzymes, and so that really affects your ability to um, break down your food and digest it and absorb it properly, so you can become um, vitamin deficient. Um, and then also, um, you know, you can experience digestive issues with that as well. Um, and also your primary nerve, your vagus nerve that runs from your brain to your colon, um, you can, um, that can actually drive irritable bowel because that gets um, stimulated um, or can create like an urgency um, or it can even cause a paralysis in it so you're not able to go to the bathroom you're constipated so um, if you're experiencing um, GI digestive issues it, it could very well be that your HPA access is in overdrive your adrenals are in overdrive um, when you're in that overproduction mode, you're flooding your body with cortisol and adrenaline. So you're going to be experiencing energy dysregulation and fatigue. And like I said, it's going to be at weird times because your output isn't following your natural circadian rhythm. So you're going to experience, um, you know, uh, being wired at night, like unable, maybe, maybe like late afternoon up until the night you're going to be wired and then you wake up in the morning and you're tired you're fatigued um you don't really get any energy till a little later in the day um or it could be that you're alert through the day and then you evening you just crash so you really have some dysregulation there um and your cortisol is kind of coming out all wonky. So um, you're really not getting that low cortisol at night so you can fall asleep and then that slow increase in the morning to wake you up and then the steady decline throughout the day so you can go to sleep again. Um, you can, um, of course, experience insomnia. If you're wired, then you know, you're having trouble sleeping. You feel alert when you should be sleeping. Um, generally, like I said, you're going to have those racing thoughts. Um, you could experience tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears, and that's caused by um, increased dopamine release because dopamine also gets released as well as serotonin when you're stressed. Um, 
you could exp uh, experience anxiety that's super common, um, an inability to wind down, um, weight gain is pretty common, especially around the belly area, um, and that's because of the cortisol levels. It, you're Basically, the cortisol is telling your body to store fat, um, so you'll notice some weight gain around the middle. Um, again, like I said, digestive and GI issues. Um, so those are all symptoms that you uh, may be experiencing being in that stressed and wired mode. So that's um, overproduction by your HPA axis, overproduction of your um, adrenaline, cortisol, and um, some other um, hormones as well. So you um, probably are not immunocompromised at this point. In fact, um, in fact, you may be one of those people that you never get sick until you take a vacation. So you don't get sick until you like your body catches up with you and hit that rest and digest mode. So if you're one of those people that um, you go, 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 and then as soon as you um, take a break, you get sick, um, it's because of your um, your immune system is being compromised. So um, the inflammation usually at this point isn't really, really bad. You're not experiencing the full impact of it yet, which is why you're not um, as immunocompromised as um, the stressed and tired is. Um, so it's important, like I said, to slow down and disengage your HPA access um, and really get into that rest and digest mode. Um, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, it's, it's really important that um, you take those steps. So the tips that I'm gonna give you, th these are just tips that you can apply in addition to um, you know, proper nutrition, eating really whole nutrient-dense foods, because like I said, you experience a depletion of vitamins and minerals and stuff like that when you're in this state, and so, it's um it's really important that you're eating um all the nutrient dense foods that you can to replenish that um and then of course you've got to make lifestyle changes too um you know finding ways to lower your stress levels and calm yourself down um i've talked about plenty of different ways like meditation and all that stuff so these tips are in addition to those things. This isn't like an all-inclusive list, so please don't take it as that. So my first tip is to consume um, 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C um, a day, really. And so this can be either, um, you know, by eating foods that are rich in vitamin C, um, or you could take a supplement. You just really want to find one that's a bioavailable um, vitamin C, something that will, you'll be able to easily absorb. So, um, you know, like a, a, a buffered vitamin C. So that's going to be like your emergency is a really good example of that, except emergency has a ton of sugar and you do not want to do sugar. So um, you really want to take um, a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. Um, this will reduce blood pressure, it regulates your cortisol levels, and it can reduce your stress responses. So the adrenal gland is actually the um, richest uh, part of the body in vitamin C. And so what happens is when your um, cortisol is released, your vitamin C gets depleted. And when you don't have enough vitamin C to keep up with the demand because you're, um, you're not taking vitamin C and your diet is poor, so you're not replacing that vitamin C, um, then you're going to experience um, a chronic state of inflammation. So vitamin C can really help with that. Um, so I definitely recommend that. Um, you also want to um, try doing deep breathing exercises. That's my second tip. And the reason is because you're, you cannot be in a sympathetic state and a parasympathetic state at the same time. So you can't be in fight or flight or rest and digest mode at the same time. When you practice deep breathing, um, what it does is it actually puts you automatically in the, the, um, the parasympathetic state, that rest and digest mode. So um, that is excellent because if you're having trouble, you know, getting into that rest and digest mode, 
deep breathing can help get you there. And so you can do that in many different ways. I'm sure you could Google many different ways. A really easy way to do deep breathing, and this is really helpful for anxiety as well, is to breathe in for seven counts, hold for seven counts, and breathe out like in a whooshing for seven counts. And you can find that that you'll feel it actually start to calm you down. Um, and like I said, it puts you automatically in that rest and digest mode. So if you're feeling anxiety or you're feeling a stress response coming on, maybe your boss just called you into his office and you know, you're starting to freak out a little bit or something like that, you can try doing the deep breathing and, um, and that can help calm you down. Um, another one is to take some herbs and supplements that are known to reduce your anxiety, help with digestion, improve sleep, um, reduce inflammation, things like that. And so I did a video um, a couple weeks ago on adaptogens, so I definitely recommend that you check that out. Um, but some other um, herbs and supplements and stuff that you can try is you can actually try like um, some of the adrenal support supplements and and um, there's a couple Dr. Berg has one um, and Naturally Nourished um, has one and they actually use a glandular component to it a bovine gland um, and so that can support your adrenals because it's actually providing you with um, the things that are in your your adrenals so it's a, a nice natural um, way to support your your adrenal glands. Um, German cam chamomile is really good because it helps with anxiety and it helps with sleep. Um, so that could be something that you um, you know sip on or maybe you find a supplement with it in it. Um, lemon balm is really good. It's good for digestion. Um, Phospholiposerine. Um, plays a big role in neural functions and it also reduces cortisol expression. So if you can find like a quality supplement that contains phospholiposerine, um, that could be really helpful for you. Um, magnesium bliss glycinate. Um, so I've talked a lot about magnesium in the past, um, but what's good about magnesium bliss glycinate this bliss glycinate, oh goodness, um, is that it actually can cross your blood brain barrier. And so it can directly affect your pituitary gland and tell it to stop stimulating your adrenals. Um, and it can also block excess adrenaline. So that one's a really good one. Um, so um, I recommend like going on Amazon and, and typing in magnesium bliss glycinate um, and try something like that. that that will be really helpful. And also magnesium is really good for sleep. Um, so, you know, you can um, take it, you know, an hour or so before bed and it can help you fall asleep. Um, just be careful, don't take too much because it can cause some um, unfavorable um, GI things like diarrhea and stuff like that. So um, valerian root can help with nervousness, anxiety, and sleep issues. So that one's a really good one. Um, an adaptogen like Panax ginseng is really good um, because that actually supports the HPA access. Um, it provides stamina and energy regulation. Um, so that's something really good to take like in the morning and maybe even you know midday or something like that. That can be really helpful, kind of boost your energy levels some um, when you're fatigued. So you kind of want to plan that, but um, you know probably best in the morning and like around mid-afternoon. I wouldn't do any later than that maybe. Um, rhodiola, which I mentioned in my adaptogen video, is really good as a mood stabilizer and pr protector of inflammation, from inflammation I mean. Um, so that's really good because that can kind of prevent you from going into that full inflammatory effect of adrenal fatigue and then experiencing that immunocompromised um, situation. Um, and uh, cordyceps is also a good one. Cordyceps is actually a mushroom um, and you can buy it. Um, I actually really like Four Sigmatic. Um, I actually get the Lion's Mane and Chaga coffee. It's very low in caffeine and um, it's very good for um, energy and stuff like that, but cordyceps, they do make a coffee with cordyceps. They also make elixirs with cordyceps, which can be really helpful with memory, learning, brain cognition, 
Um, it protects your nervous system, it provides energy, and it also provides a resilience to stress, which is obviously really important. Um, so you can check out those um, herbs and supplements and stuff and, um, you know, try a couple and see if you feel any better. Um, I, I highly recommend them. I, I take adaptogens. Um, I take actually a lot of these things are in my supplements. So, um, and I found it really helpful. Um, so the fourth tip, and this is a little outside the box. Um, maybe some of you have heard of it, but take a cold shower. So cold immersion therapy can be really helpful because um, there's a couple reasons. Um, but it can actually um, stimulate your vagus nerve, that nerve that goes from your brain to your colon, and reduce your stress response. Um, it also activates our brown fat, which brown fat is um, fat that contains mitochondria. And so when it's activated, it actually will use like sugar and fat and amino acids to um, from your blood to generate heat so um, it can actually improve metabolism and your brown fat um, most of it sits like up here in your upper back and shoulders area um, so that's why like when we get cold and we shiver like we we hunch up it's our our brown fat is actually being activated and so that like I said that can be really good for your metabolism um, you could even do it like at the end of your shower, you know, switch it to cold and, and stay in there as long as you can stand it and go and, you know, jump out or get into a cold pool or, or um, you know, there's kind of like cryotherapies and stuff like that. I don't really know anything about those, so I can't recommend anything. Um, but a cold shower is cheap, especially because you're not using hot water. Um, so it's cheap, free, um, and easy. So you could try that and see how you do with that. And then my very last tip is utilizing food as medicine. Um, and there are a lot of foods that you can eat that's going to replenish your vitamins and really support your adrenals. Um, but one of the big ones is lemon. Um, and that's a lot, a lot because of the, a lot, I cannot talk today. That's um, because of the vitamin C, but also there's a lot of other um, properties in lemons that can be very helpful. Um, it stimulates your bile flow um, and supports your, and stimulates your digestion. Um, it supports lymphatic tissues. Um, it can reduce inflammation in the thyroid and the adrenals. Um, and if you utilize that, that white fuzzy part, like benzerine, that, that pith, um, you can get the bioflavonoids and that, and that's really good too. Um, it aids in your metabolism because it reduces, um, the amount of body fat that you store and it can be like a hormonal reset for you. Um, and like I said, you really want to, um, make it as bioavailable as possible. So combining it with fat is, is a good way to do that. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're putting lemon juice on a salad, you know, squeezing fresh lemon on a salad, and um, I recommend, you know, um, uh, actually getting like some of the rind um, as well on there, and um, so you can get the full benefits. Um, and you could do that and then add fat like avocado and, um, you know, salad dressing, with really healthy fatty oil, um, that will help your body absorb the vitamin C, um, better. Um, the, another way that you can use food as medicine, it, it, that's by balancing your hydration and your electrolytes. So, um, your very often your your electrolytes are going to be out of balance because of the dysregulation in um, your fluids and stuff like that. So really um, focus on drinking lots of water and replenishing those electrolytes. So using a really high quality um, salt like pink Himalayan salt or like a Redmond's um, sea salt or something like that it has lots of minerals. Um, as well as the sodium in it, um, you'll get a lot from that. And then you can also, um, 
you know, replenish your electrolytes by, you know, because your potassium and your magnesium and stuff like that by eating avocados and, and dark leafy greens. So you could easily, you know, make yourself a really beautiful salad and get your vitamin C, get your electrolytes, um, the fiber that you need to help with some of those digestive issues that you're dealing with. Um, so those are um, really good ways to use food as medicine. And then another way is using turmeric root or turmeric powder. And I talked about this in my adaptogen video, um, but turmeric is really um, high antioxidant and high anti-inflammatory. And it's actually um, can help uh, prevent um, tumors, cancerous tumors. So that's something to consider. Um, it's got natural detoxification properties. And then, of course, it's going to reduce your inflammation, which helps your glands not to be in overdrive mode. So these are all some tips that you can um, implement and try and see if it helps you feel any better. Um, I definitely recommend them. Um, and like I said, this is these things are just in addition to altering your lifestyle a little bit so you really take some time to relax and um, and take care of yourself um, because without the lifestyle changes, these things, they might help you, but it's not going to help you reboot your adrenals and kind of rebound from the tired, um, the stressed and wired. And so you could still do these things, but if you don't change your lifestyle and you don't um, change your nutrition, then you may find that you still end up in that stressed and wired. And then you've got to change all that anyway, because that's really the only way out is implementing these things that you can do to support your adrenals as well as um, making significant lifestyle changes um, and you know the amount of stress that you allow in your life and allow to affect you. So if you guys have any questions about any of this, um, please feel free to post them in the comment box. Um, I'll go back and answer any of them. I actually don't see any questions posted right now. Um, if you guys, um, if this is something that you are experiencing and you really want to get your HPA access out of that overdrive mode and avoid the stressed and tired, um, this is something I help women with. Um, I do help with the stressed and tired because that's the category I was in. Um, so, and that one's, like I said, harder to come back from. Um, but if you're in that stressed and wired and you want some, um, some help, um, some support to, um, you know, bring that HPA access out of overdrive and kind of disengage it and, um, really start, um, eliminating some of those symptoms that you're experiencing. And actually one that I didn't mention is even though you're alert and wired, um, you actually aren't fully um, getting the brain cognition, the function um, that you would get if you weren't stressed and wired. So just um, wanted to point that out real quick. So if this is something that you know you want some help with, you want some support with, or maybe you just want to get clear on where you fall in line and what's going on with you, I would love to um, talk to you about it. Um, I will include a link in the comments below um, with a link to my calendar so you can schedule a free mini coaching session with me where we can get really clear on what's going on with you, what's keeping you stuck, and really give you a roadmap um, to getting to feeling better and getting to you to your um, your your best optimal health. So, um, like I said, any questions, please let me know. And I hope that you all have a beautiful rest of your day and a weekend. And next week, I will be talking about stressed and tired. So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you all so much for watching. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.